18 of Acts chapter 2. Thank you, Father. Can we read together? Want to go? And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, in the last days. Say, in the last days. Say, we are in the last days. Hallelujah. So, we, can you sit down? Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you for what you started last Sunday. Thank you for what you're about to accomplish in our lives today. We ask that, Lord, you throw your weight in this house. Father, make me a pen, like a pen in the hands of a ready writer, that you will rewrite the lives of your people, that you will correct every error in our lives, and that you will take the glory at the end, in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. So last week we started with our series, In the Last Days. Hallelujah. So we began to look at a few things uh, that talked about the last day. Hallelujah. We saw the ones that are, they said, the Bible said, in the last day, perilous times will come. We saw in the last day, it said, the mountain of God's house shall, shall rest in the last day. So many good things we saw, and we saw some terrible things, but we saw the promise of God in the last days. Hallelujah. And that is what I want us to dwell upon today, because no matter the terrible things that are happening, the promise of God shall be fulfilled in the life of God's people in the mighty name of Jesus. So in the last day, the la anytime... You know, when I grew up, anytime you mention the last day, people get scared. When I was growing up, anytime they talk about the last day, everybody gets scared. It's fear that falls upon people. But I've come to tell you that there is a promise of God upon his children. On this scripture, in the scripture we saw, he said, in the last day, I will pour out of my spirit. So why there are terrible things going on, the spirit of God will bring comfort into, into the life of God's people. Am I speaking to someone today? Why terrible things are happening, the Spirit of God will produce salvation in the life of God's people in the last days. Hallelujah. So therefore, there is a promise of God that shall be fulfilled in our life in these last days in the name of the Lord Jesus. He said something very profound that we did upon last week. He said, my, he said, thy sons, he said, your sons and your daughters will do what? They will prophesy. He said, your men servants and your lady servant or maid servants will also prophesy. So we dwelled upon that last week to let us know that when God releases his spirit, he said, I will release my spirit upon all flesh into the whole world. But only sons and daughters, only servants, both male and female, that will profit in them. It's not getting me at all. So that is why you must be a son, a daughter, and a servant. Hallelujah. Because when you are a son, you are a daughter, and you are a servant, then you begin to enjoy, you begin to walk into the program of divinity. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And also, I want to open your eyes to see that in that same scripture, I know a lot of people, they are feeling set back, like the ladies that have been called into service, they feel like because I'm a woman, I can't do anything. It's a lie. God said in the last, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. He said your sons and your daughters. He didn't say only sons. He said sons and daughters will prophesy. He said both the servant, the male and the female servants, he said they will prophesy. So therefore, God is looking for sons and daughters and servants so he can use them in this last day. So when he pours his spirit, we said, when God pours out his spirit, we said sons and daughters are revealed. Those are the people that begin to walk in the spirit of God. Those are the people that begin to manifest the grace of God. When God pours out his spirit, servants are revealed. There are people whose service is only eye service. When everyone is here, they can walk 20 times to fix everything here. But when nobody is here, they are doing nothing. Hallelujah. So we must be sons, daughters, and servants in order to be in this mandate of God. Hallelujah. And he began to give us promises. He said that we prophesy. I want us to look at that. What does it mean to prophesy? Praise the Lord. He said, your sons and your daughters, your servants, men servants, they will prophesy. What does it mean to prophesy? One, to prophesy is to say that a specified thing will happen in the future. That is one. Please make sure you have a notebook. To prophesy means what? To say that a specified thing will happen in a given time and space. Hallelujah. 
Number two, to prophesy is to predict with assurance, to predict with assurance on the basis of spiritual knowledge. You are saying that this is about to come to pass with the background of spiritual knowledge because you are in the spirit. Hallelujah. Number three, to prophesy is the act of getting and passing on message from God to humanity by the spirit of God. Can I take number three again? The act of getting and passing on messages from God to humanity by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Today is a very brief service. We are doing very short because we have declarations and blessings from our fathers. I want to just teach us a few things. And then the next time we meet, we're going to scatter in many directions. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Did we get number three? The act of getting and passing on messages from God to humanity by the Spirit of God. Number four, the act of conveying what God has spoken. The act of conveying what God has spoken. In Amos chapter 3 and verse 8, the Bible said, The lion had roared, who will not fear? The Lord had spoken, who can but prophesy? Hallelujah. Amos chapter 3 and verse 8. Hallelujah. The lion has done what has wrong. Who will not be afraid? Who will not be? Who will not fear? The lion had what wrong? Who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Hallelujah! After God speaks, that's when prophecy proceeds. If you prophesy when God has not spoken, you prophesy. You prophesy lie. Uh, if you prophesy after, or if you speak when God has not spoken. Is prophet lying, not prophesying. Hallelujah. So that is why I want us to understand that God wants us to prophesy. Hallelujah. Because when we prophesy as instructed by God, the word we speak, it takes up flesh and it dwells with us. Isaiah prophesied of the coming of Christ in the Old Testament. And it came to pass. Hallelujah. There are many prophecies that were given in the Old Testament and it came to pass. Hallelujah. So when God has spoken, when God pours his spirit, any son and daughter, servants and men servants, they are connected to the radio of heaven. So God is talking their hearing. There are many people, people prophecies have been released concerning their life, but their life remains the same. Prophecies has not come out. God wants you and I to prophesy because prophecy is the road upon which God fulfills his plan for our life. Somebody not hear that. God wants us to prophesy. Because it's after you are prophesied. That is when the things begin to manifest. It can be spoken in heaven. But not brought to earth. Because there is no man to stand the gap. To collect the message from the heavenly. As it drops here. That's when it starts manifesting. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 14. It said the word was made flesh. So when the word is spoken. It begins to manifest physically. So when the word remains, even when you carry the Bible in your hand, as you have not read it and speak the word, nothing happens. When you see where he say it is written, Jesus saw it in Luke 18. He said this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes today. In Luke chapter 4, rather, in verse 18. He said this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes today. Hallelujah. That is how it should be. So when you discover the word, then that is when he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach. He discovered where it is and he closed the book. And it began to manifest. Hallelujah. So when the word comes, then manifestation proceeds. That is why God wants us to prophesy. Hallelujah. I decree that before we end this service, you will prophesy upon your life in the name of Jesus. I say you will prophesy upon your family. You will prophesy upon your children in the name of Jesus. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20, he said, despise not prophesying. Hallelujah. God delights in us prophesying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Kabayata. When we prophesy, your case file is open. Hallelujah. When prophecies go forward, your case file is open. Praise the Lord. In Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 4, the Bible said, God spoke to Ezekiel. He said, therefore, prophesy. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 4. He said, therefore, prophesy. Hallelujah. So God, no wait. No, when I was studying these scriptures, I was asking myself a question. God, 
old a man to prophesy. Can you ponder over that? God, the almighty God, he told a man, say prophesy. He said, because if you don't prophesy, I cannot act. I don't know if you guys are seeing the scripture like I see them. There is nothing you cannot do. Protocol breaker. He can do everything, but he called a man. He said, speak it out. He said, when you speak, that is when I begin to manifest. Are you seeing the scriptures the way I see them? He called Ezekiel. He said, devil, son of man, prophesy. In Ezekiel chapter 6 and verse 2, he said, son of man, set thy face towards, towards the mountains of Israel and prophesy. Ezekiel chapter 6 and verse 2. Son of man, set thy face towards the mountain of Israel and prophesy against them. If we don't prophesy, God cannot perform. That is why he said when he pours out his spirit, sons and daughters will prophesy. And if you go towards the end, 1920, he said, and I will do wonders in heaven. I will do signs in heaven and wonders on earth. After you are prophesied. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 and verse 20. 20 and 21. Put it up quickly. The scripture we just read, Acts chapter 2. Yes. Start from verse 19. From verse 19. He said, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. After sons, daughters, servants have done what? Prophesy. Are you seeing that? So when signs, are, when signs and wonders precede prophecy, hallelujah, so God wants every one of us to prophesy. Hallelujah. In Ezekiel chapter 25 and verse 2, he says, Son of man, set thy face against the mountain of the Ammonites. He said, I'm prophesy. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 25 verse 2. Ezekiel 25 and verse 2. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 25 verse 2. Okay. Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. God, send a man to prophesy. Hallelujah. You see how important it is? Without prophecy, there's no manifestation. Without prophecy, there are no signs. Praise the Lord. In Ezekiel 28 and verse 21, he says, Son of man, set thy face against the dawn <laughs> and do what? Prophesy. Ezekiel 28 and verse 21. Ezekiel 28 and verse 21. Ezekiel 28 and verse 21. Put it up quickly, please. Hallelujah. Can we read together? Want to go? That prophecy has gone, signs follows. Wonders begin to happen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right. When prophecies come from God, number one, it brings comfort. Hallelujah. When prophecies come from God, number one, it brings comfort. 1 Corinthians 14, 31. When prophecies come from God, it brings what? Comfort. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. Hallelujah. Did he say some? Can we read that together, everybody? For ye may all Let's read it again. For ye may all. Did he say some of you? He said for ye may all prophesy one by one. That all may learn. And all may be comforted. Hallelujah. So God wants us to prophesy. Praise the Lord. Number two. When prophecy comes from God. It brings restoration. Somebody say restoration. Ezekiel 37 from verse 4 to 11. God spoke to Ezekiel. He said, therefore, son of man, prophesy. The bones were dry. When you start from verse 1, he said, and the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me in the midst of the valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. And God asked him, he said, son of man, can these bones live again? He said, ah, Lord, thou knowest. And from verse 4, he said, therefore, son of man, prophesy. Can you start from verse 4? Ezekiel 37 from verse 4. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones 
I say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I told us, I said, when prophecies come from God, right? He said, hear the word of the Lord. Continue verse 5. He said, thus hear the Lord unto these bones. Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and ye shall live. These were dry bones. Hallelujah. God said, prophesy. Verse 6, continue. And I will lay sinews upon you. Still prophecy. Prophecy was building flesh, building life from dry bones. Hallelujah. I will lay sinews on you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Hallelujah. And you shall know that I am the Lord. God gave me his word for somebody. I don't know the abadabaga, the embargo place over your life. You shall live. I speak God's word for your life. I say you will live. You shall not die before your time. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what is worn out in your body. There are spare parts in heaven. God said I should tell you. As your eyes remain on him, you shall live. In the name of Jesus. That situation around your life causing you to cry. Day by day, he said you shall live. In the name of Jesus. Continue verse 6, please. He says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Somebody said there was a noise. That is why I wanted us to be noisy this morning. Because the sound of noise is the sound of life. When noise begins, that's when life begins. When noise begins, that's when miracles begin. He said, and I heard a noise. The, boy, the bones were joining to bones. He said, bone came to bone. Child of God, I want to speak into your life. I said, bone is coming to bone. In the name of Jesus. There are families that the enemy has scattered. I decree bone is coming to bone. In the name of Jesus. There are lives that the enemy has scattered. I decree and I prophesy. I say bone is joining to bones. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Tamana Shanda. And he said, oh, Kandibata. He prophesied flesh upon the bone. The bone may stand for life. You need comfort in that life. I speak comfort on every side. I speak comfort on every side. I speak comfort on every side. I decree and I declare upon your life. The hand of God is coming. And comfort is coming on all sides. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Please put it up. I'm teaching today. I'm not preaching. Hallelujah. Just that sometimes something is doing me inside. <laughs> something is doing me inside. Hallelujah. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. Oh, Balachanda, yadada. I don't know what is missing from your life. I prophesy, it's coming back to you now. I prophesy, it's coming back to you now. Whatever the enemy took, maybe your health, receive your health. 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 In the name of Jesus. Put up our scripture, please. Until we are done. He said, flesh came upon, upon them. He said, and their skin covered them above. Hallelujah. You have been, it looked like, there are some people here, it looked like you have been through so lonely. God is about to comfort you. God is about to cover you. There are some people, they have been so exposed. Any arrow fire is getting at you. This time, God is about to cover you. I said, God is covering you. God is covering you. They will come. He said, only with the eyes, without see. He said, but it shall, a thousand shall fall at the right and ten thousand on the side. He said, only with the eyes, I speak into your life. Arrows will pass by you. They shall not touch you. Arrows of wickedness will pass by you. They are permitted to pass. They are not permitted to touch. Because I hear God says, He said, touch not my anointed. And do my servants no harm. I speak over your life. You become a touch not material. From this minute forward. In the name of Jesus. Please continue with that scripture. To verse 11. He said no bread was in them. He spoke. Every other thing came. 
That is why I pity people who think when they come to church, do they have to pray for me already? I can't go again. Hallelujah. Some people say, oh, he prophesied, he prayed, and he did everything, so that's it. Have you seen how many prophecies have gone forward from God, not from man? Some people say, hey, Pastor, already prayed for you. Why did he come back again? It is continuous appearance in his presence that brings perfection. Every other thing was done except life. Even though there was already life in the bones, for bones to be shaken and coming together, there was already life. But another word was needed for life, for breath to come into that living soul. Somebody hearing me now. That is why we must constantly appear before God. This time he said there was no life in them. The bones were shaking inside. But the people were not standing to walk. They were not talking. But their heart was beating. And he began to prophesy. He made another prophecy. I don't know where you stand right now. Other prophecies have worked. Business have worked. Job promotions have come. But you still look stagnated. Document has not come so you can travel from point A to point B. I have come to prophesy. After now, I see you moving. There shall be motion in your life. There shall be motion in your life. Doors are opening for you. Doors are opening for you. Doors are opening for your family. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy life into your life not exist you will leave you will not exist you will leave in the name of Jesus hallelujah let me just go ahead looking at time hallelujah the next thing we said when prophecies come from God it brings number one what it brings comfort number two it brings number three it brings prosperity oh Latasha do you like prosperity? He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. It is the mindset of God that we should prosper. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Hallelujah. In Haggai chapter, Haggai chapter 6 and verse 14. Haggai chapter 6 and verse 14. Put it up quickly. He said, the elders of Judah, they built and they prospered. By the prophesying. I want to prophesy somebody into Olelebo Kosha. Zikudu Bagada. In the elders of the land. He said they built it and they prospered. By the prophesying. 614. 614. That is 114. 614. He said by the prophesying of of Zechariah the prophet, and, and he said, they, when words are released, words from God, doors begin to open. Open your hands towards me. Open your hands towards me. I want to speak into your life. I said, your doors are opening. I said, doors are opening. I said, doors are opening. In the name of Jesus. Ezra chapter 6 verse 14, rather. Ezra 6 14, sorry. Hallelujah. Your doors are opening. Prosper in all that you do. Prosper in everything 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 you do. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Finally, when prophecies come from God, judgment is released upon the enemy. That is why when Anna was dedicating her baby in 1 Samuel chapter 2 from verse 6, he said, The Lord killed it and he made it alive. You don't understand it. He said, the Lord kill it and he make it alive. For God to raise you up, anyone that was holding you must go down. I want to release judgmental prophecy. Any hand of wickedness that has been holding you against your way. I said, they are going down by fire. I said, they go down by fire. I said, they go down by fire. In the name of Jesus. I said, they are going down by fire. They are going down by fire. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Talibada. Ko shakate baladia da 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 da. Inku patu baladia da da ba. Thank you, my father. In the name of Jesus. The following are the sources of prophecy. In order for prophecy to come from, for you to give accurate prophecies from God, you must first of all hear what God is saying. Hallelujah. Prophecy from God can only proceed by you hearing from God. So there are sources that we get prophecies from God. Number one, the word of God. Somebody say God's word. Number one, 
status of prophecy is God's word. If I just take the Bible and begin to release scriptures into your life, that is enough prophecy to change your life. If I collect the word of God, as we were reading Ezekiel 37, those words I was releasing like bullets into your life, is enough prophecy to move you from where you are, you are to where you ought to be. Hallelujah. God's word. Number, number one. 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 19 to 21. From verse 19, he said, we have also a, sure, a more sure word of prophecy. Hallelujah. The word of God is a sure word of prophecy. 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 19 to 21. 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 19 to 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Hallelujah. Next verse. Verse 20. It says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture. Can you see that? The scripture is what? Prophecy. Hallelujah. Of any private is of any private interpretation. The last verse is said, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Every word in God's word is a prophecy. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Revelation 1, verse 3. Quickly. Can we read together? Blessed is he that readeth. And they that heareth the word of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. Hallelujah. Can you go to verse 22? Revelation, Revelation chapter 1. No, Revelation 22 now. Verse 7, sorry. Revelation 22 verse 7. Quick, quick, quick. Revelation 22 verse 7. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saying of... Hallelujah. Verse 10. Koshanamaha. And he said unto me, seal, seal not the saying of the prophecy of this book. For the time is verse 18 to 19. Let's read together. I want to go. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Next. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Hallelujah. So the word of God is the primary source of prophecy. Hallelujah. So that's why we must put in the word in our system. Put in the word in your spirit. Put in the word because as you keep listening, receiving the word, that is how the word of God is shaping your life into where you are going to. Hallelujah. Every promises that he has given there, they are yea and amen. Psalm 118, Psalm 118 verse 17 says, I shall not die, but I will live. It's for you to prophesy on yourself. My children will not die, but they will live. Hallelujah. Isaiah 8, 18, he said, I and the children that the Lord has given, we are for what? Sign and for wonder. So you must know the prophecy so you can speak it. Psalm 91 and verse 16. It's what? I shall not die, but I will live. Hallelujah. You know, he said, with long life will I satisfy thee and show thee my salvation. Hallelujah. Psalm 107 verse 20, he said, he sent his word and he healed them. Hallelujah. He sent forth his word and he healed them. When you receive God's word, healing come. Hallelujah. So the word of God is what? A source of prophecy. Matthew 24, 35. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away. He said, but my word, the word of God, the word of God is the prophecy that will not pass. Hallelujah. Every other thing may pass. Praise the Lord. So we must remember the word. Put the word in your spirit. Hebrews 4, 12. He said, the word is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Psalm 119, verse 105. Another scripture to put in your spirit. 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse, he said, the grass, grass may wither, the flower may fade. He said, but the word of our God abides ever. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55, verse 11, he says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. When God says it, we listen and we echo it. Hallelujah. And he goes and he fulfills the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, he says, newborn babes, he said, desire the sincere milk of the word. 
Praise the Lord. Matthew 4, 4, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Somebody say every word. Somebody say every word. By every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1 from verse 1, he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Hallelujah. I love verse 14. He said, the word was made flesh, and it dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We need the word of God. It's a primary source of prophecy. When you begin to listen, as the word is hitting your spirit, things are changing for good. Hallelujah. I speak into your life. As God, God's word is coming, I see your life shaping into your destiny in the name of Jesus. I see your life is shaping into your destiny in the name of Jesus. Number two source. Remember we said, if in order to prophesy, you must receive the message. Hallelujah. So I said, the following are the, are the sources of godly prophecies. We said number one is what? God's word. Number two, dreams. Somebody say dreams. Somebody say dreams. So just these two points we are taking for today and then we we'll continue next Sunday. Hallelujah. Somebody say dreams. All right, let's define a dream. A dream is a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations. That usually occur involuntarily in their mind during certain stages of sleep. Should I take it again? A dream is a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that usually occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is very important for everyone to dream. Everyone was born and given an access to the dream world. Hallelujah. The dream world is a place where information has been deposited for those who are awake spiritually to get. Somebody hearing? Can I say it again? The dream world is a place where spiritual information about you, about your family, are being deposited for those who are spiritually awake to get it from. If you are not spiritually awake, you cannot get it from. You can't assess it. If I, when you go there, you get when you're coming out, they seize it from you. If you're not spiritually awake, if you by chance, maybe after pastor, shout, 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 and you went home. By reason of this, you are not connected fully. But by reason of pastor screaming, you go, you see yourself dreaming. Ah, you dream the whole night, but you can't remember one thing out of the dream in the morning. You entered the dream world. You collected the information. When you were coming back, they said, who gave you right? And they collected it from you. Everyone is supposed to dream. As long as you are living, you ought to dream. You may not dream every day because some people's dreams like malaria. Because some people dream every minute. In fact, if you get five minutes to sleep, some people will dream here. And the dream does not make sense. I was going and going and going and going. I started coming back and coming back. I went again. <laughs> some dreams that you cannot interpret. <laughs> Hallelujah. Their own dream is like malaria. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everyone should have access to the dream world. Praise the Lord. If you're spiritually alert, you must get access to the dream world. Because you enter there, you see what is happening. What has happened? What is here to happen? There are so many people among you and I here. When things happen physically, that's when you look at it. It looked like this thing happened before. No, it happened in your dream. You forgot the dream. They collected it when you were coming out of the gate. You enter there. Pastor prayed that the prayer was too hot that day. That you assessed the dream world. You saw the thing. You were coming back happy. You are seeing something today. When you got to the gate, they say, car, drop it here. And you went home empty. <laughs> it is bad enough for you to dream and forget. But it is terrible not to dream at all. If you are not dreaming at all, you are being shot out of the dream world. You have been shut out of an access God gave to every living body and soul. Because that is the eyes of your soul, the dream. It's the eyes of you. That's where your soul exercises its eyes. So when someone's eyes are plucked off, that's where your eyes, your eyes, are, as you see this with this eye, when you are asleep, that's where your soul is supposed to be seeing. Your soul travels to that world and begins to see what is happening. What has been planned? What God has even released? Because there are things God has released. If you don't see it, the enemy can take it off from you. That is why you must see it. So that when you wake up, you begin to 
them to happen. If you see the one that the enemy fired, you begin to cancel them. In Genesis 37 and verse 5, Joseph dreamed a dream. In Genesis 37 and verse 9, Joseph did dream again. Those two dreams change his life for good. If you don't have dream, you can be stagnated in one place. That is why we need, that is a source where information comes. God said, in, he said, many of you prophets, he said, I speak to you by dreams and visions. He said, but I said my servant Moses, that I talk to him face to face. So there are many people that prophesy out of the dream they had over the night. A pastor was sharing with me, he said, he sees some things on Monday, and this, those are the things he shared on Sunday. I said, my own, I see why I'm standing on the altar. I said, the ones I see in the night, I call the person in the morning. What if you saw accident? You leave it to Sunday, the person go and dies. <laughs> I said, if I see it, that if it's 2, 3 a.m., I don't send a text. If I'm late to call, I call you immediately. I cancel it. I don't wait till Sunday. If it's Monday, I'll keep it till Sunday. Somebody can die, oh. And you say, I saw it, oh, I saw it, oh. Why not cancel it at once? Or you pray, say, God, keep them till Sunday when I pray for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said, when I see it, I call immediately or the next morning. Or I send a message. This thing I saw is canceled. Nobody will die. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Everyone should have access to the dream world. In Genesis chapter 40, you know, Joseph's life, eh? Oh, manakasha. Spiritual gifts are contagious. That is why you will not live here with a closed eye. Your eyes must be open. I say spiritual gifts are contagious. Joseph saw two dreams. When he went, ah, Kabbalata, he changed his life. He went to prison. In Genesis chapter 40, the Bible says something. He said the prisoner dreamt. They came in contact with Joseph. They began to dream. <laughs> As they came in contact with him, they began to dream. I see somebody, you will not go out of here with a closed eye. Genesis 40 and verse 5. The two prisoners, they dream, both of them, same night. Why? They came in contact with the dreamer. I have come to open someone's eyes in this service. I say, your eyes are open. In the name of Jesus. He said, and they dream a dream, both of them, same night. And he interpreted the dreams. He restored one man to the palace. One person died. He told him, when you go, mention me to Pharaoh. The guy forgot it until when the thing that he carried from there also entered Pharaoh. That spirit of dreaming that he collected from David, from the dreamer, from Joseph, he took it to the palace. The thing entered Pharaoh. And Pharaoh too dreamed two dreams. Hallelujah. I want to pray for somebody. You will not live here with closed eyes. If you have never dreamt, you have not dreamt in a long time, you shall dream beginning tonight. I say you will sleep in the afternoon, you will dream. In the name of Jesus. I say God is opening your eyes. God is opening your spiritual sight. You shall see. You will see in the day. You will see in the night. If you believe it, shall I receive it. In the name of Jesus. You know, there is something about Joseph I love so much. I love the guy. You know, one of the things I love is that, you know, some of you, you are here, you are lamenting over a problem. God knows how to turn your problem to your good. No, you didn't hear that. He knows how to turn that disadvantage into an advantage. Let me explain the one of Joseph. The Bible makes us understand that Jacob, the father of Joseph, he labored for the mother of Joseph seven years. He was deceived. Instead of giving him Rachel, they gave him Leah. And they told him, in order to get Rachel, you will labor another seven years. So he worked twice just to get the right woman. Another seven years. Now this woman he worked for again the second time. She now becomes second wife. Joseph is associated with two, the number two. And two speaks of double. The woman that was supposed to be first wife became second wife. I know that everybody must have pain in their heart. I was supposed to be the first wife. What happened? I'm now the second wife. But God turned it into something good for Joseph. Because he began to associate the life of Joseph with double. There is a grace of double. The Bible says, all about Shanda. Joseph saw two dreams. Somebody said double. He saw two dreams that changed his life for good. In Genesis chapter 37 verse 5 and verse 30, chapter 37 and verse 9. Two dreams. He met two people in the prison. One man came out and after two, he forgot him for two years. Two people he met had two dreams. 
The one man that was restored to the palace, he went to the palace, he contaminated Pharaoh. Pharaoh had how many dreams? Two dreams. He was remembered after two years. Oh, Lama Shanda. I am here to prophesy that into your life. That, that second position, it looked like a curse. God turned it to a blessing. He brought forth the grace for double. Joseph had two children. Oh, you had a Baha. Uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. Joseph became a second in command. Somebody said double. I speak it to your life. The grace of double upon you. The grace of double upon your family. That thing which the enemy is using against you. I turn it for your good. 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 In the name of Jesus. Oh, Shana Maka. We are going to pray because I want to leave the rest for next Sunday. Oh, Titi Nakabaha. I told us something. If the enemy wants to waste a person, if you are not dreaming, don't be happy. The first thing the enemy does, if he captures a man or a woman, is taking off their eyes. Judges chapter 16, verse 21. Can you put it up? The first thing the enemy does, he does what? Takes off the eyes of whoever he captures. Judges 16, 21. He said, and the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Can you see that? When they captured Samson, the great man, the first thing they did, they took his sight. Child of God, if you are not dreaming anymore, something has happened. The enemy, they are, they are, they are targeted to take your sight. I'm here to cause a restoration. I'm here by the instruction of Yahweh to produce a restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus. Many people have been having dreams. They, they, when, you are, when you wake up in the night, you know you will remember. But before morning, one trace of it you cannot remember. The enemy, I say, if they don't put up the eyes, they try to destroy everything you have taken from there. But God is about to bring forth a restoration. I say, God is bringing forth a restoration. I say, God is bringing forth a restoration. I speak into your life, your eyes are open. I say, 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 your eyes are open. I say your eyes are open. I say your eyes are open. I say your eyes are open. In the name of Jesus. When the devil does not succeed to close the eye, he begins to give, sometimes he shuts the eye and starts giving you wrong vision. What is the meaning of blindness? Blindness is not the absence of sight. He's seeing the wrong thing. A blind man sees darkness. Even they come to this place nowadays, all these lights are he will say, why is everywhere dark? So blindness is the absence of the right vision. Blindness is the absence of the right vision. Because a blind man sees. There is a singer in my country, a secular musician, who said, he said, even when a blind man wants to see, he closes his eyes. A blind man doesn't sleep with the eyes open. He closes their eyes. Even though when the eyes are open, they see, not, they see darkness. Close their eyes when he sleeps. So, blindness is not the absence of vision, but seeing the wrong thing. Hallelujah. God is about to open your eyes. God is about to open your eyes. I say, God is about to open your eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus. There are dreams from God. There are dreams from the devil. When the devil fires a dream, they put you at variance with your helper. The devil can fire a dream to somebody who has not been dreaming all their life. One day they just dream that their husband is chasing her. Is, is the spirit of divorce in their family? Oh? Polygamy in their family is what is pursuing her. Everyone in their family is second, third marriage right now. And now something is pursuing her so she can leave. She pack her bag and leave the house. Say, my husband, they pursue me to kill me. The, the foundation in the family just put the dream there so they can make sure that this pattern holds. I pray for you. Every wrong vision the enemy has planted in your sight. Today, scatter. As it breaks and scatter. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Talabaka. Somebody just suddenly wake up. Say, I saw a pastor cursing me. No be foundation, they push her. Somebody who came, deliverance was conducted on her. Somebody who came, you saw her body started changing. God started working in her case. She stopped coming to church. They asked her, she said she had a dream. She stopped cursing her. 
foundation they follow. And right now, their life will be more useless. Somebody you pick from the place of alcoholism. You pick with a dirty life. Somebody thinking of committing suicide. And you brought the light of God. is already shining on her life. She turned, she said she, saw, she had a dream. Pastor was cursing her in the dream. The same pastor that conducted your deliverance. The same pastor who stood and was listening to you with your smelling alcohol mouth. And now the pastor is cursing you. Don't be foundation fighter. Huh? That is a dream. That is a dream from the pit of hell. A girl called me one very early in the morning. I think like how many years ago? I don't remember. And she said she saw a dream and she's confused. I said, what is the dream? She said she saw Apostle. Apostle kissed her in the dream. I said, I said that dream you saw, you saw your papa and your father you saw. <laughs> you didn't see Apostle imparting you. You didn't see him imparting you. You saw him kissing you in the dream. I said, it's Indian movie mixed with Nigerian movie that you watched and fell into the sleep that you saw. You didn't see my father. <laughs> when the devil wants to use less a life, they begin to project wrong images. So I saw Papa chasing me. He want to pierce me in the dream. That's why I didn't come to join. It's your father that was chasing you. Oh, Namasha. We're going to pray. Let me not take much time. Lift up your right hand on fire. Say, my father, my father. Lord, as I begin to pray, in the name of Jesus, Lord, restore my spiritual sight. Restore my dream life by fire, by thunder. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. My father, my father, Lord, as we begin to pray, in the name of Jesus, restore my spiritual sight, restore my dream life. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Rato Bodoga, Ita da 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 you're going to lift up your right hand. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. As, I to pray, As I begin to pray, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus let, the let the effect of every evil dream, every I, have evil dream I have seen, let it be scattered today. Scattered today. In, the in the name of Jesus, let the effect let the of every negative of dream every negative I, have seen, I have seen, let it break and scatter. Let it break and scatter. Let it break and scatter. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Let the bako shako paya. Ato do 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 Say, my father, my father. Every good dream and vision that you gave unto me that I did not remember. Lord, bring it again. Lord, bring it again. Lord, show me again. Lord, show me again. Lord, show me again. In the name of Jesus. Turn that into prayer. Libado Shanto Baligadabaga. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.